under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, thank you all. Open up this March 4th, Monday, morning commissioners meeting. We have the auditor, all three commissioners, and the county attorney present. Uh, first on the agenda, we've got uh, a couple of contracts for Niagara Lake. Uh, the one is approving their, their, their grant. That's uh, the Oak River, the ARPA money we gave them. And this $4,665 is out of that to get their match for their $58,320 for their planning. So it don't cost us nothing. The 4000 comes out of their match in the part of the grant. Yeah. 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 So they're, they're $4,665 got them $58,320. So yeah. Got planning. So, um, so like I said, this is just a, they are not a municipality, that's why the county is doing this for them. So, um, so this contract for the grant administration services. Uh, so they entertain a motion to approve that for Niagara Lake. Okay. So, Go ahead. Make a motion to approve it. Second. Okay, all in favor. Motion carries 3-0. And then we have the, uh, just to receive, this is just the letter receiving the notice to release the funds upon that. So for the 58,000, I wonder if you guys know what they, how much they received out of that. So. That's so, it. Makes it tenfold. Yeah. It's increase. Yeah. That's what we like to have grant money used. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Bill, do you have a report you want to update? No, I just, of course, thank you, report. Mm -hmm. I assume you got it. I just wanted to stop by see if you had any questions I could answer. No, do a good job out there. Yeah, yeah. thanks. We hear a lot of compliments, so thank you for the hard work. Yes, we do. Well, we some great parts. Yeah. Um, so, department updates. Josh, you're back here in Fort IT. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Don't have necessarily anything to, to update. Waiting on parts. We started the website project. <coughs> the next request for the website has started as well with Amber over at the Sheriff's Department. Other than that, I really don't have anything new at this time, unless you have something for me. The security office over at the courthouse, where, where are we at? Then? Waiting on a TPM chip for the server from Dow. Still have not received that. We were supposed to receive that a week and a half ago. Still have yet to receive that. We were going to run. We were going to run the Exact Vision software and the two graphics cards to push the monitors. The server 2022, but the graphics cards and the <coughs> server 2022 Windows 10 and Windows 11 PC. In order to run Windows 11, we have to have a TPM chip on that server. We're going to have a TPM chip, so we'll leave my cash. Monitors up. Everything else has been wired in, patched in. Just waiting for that. They're ready to go. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Josh, I talked to you last week uh, concerning Andy Perkins had it some wanting to know when he could start videotaping his his meetings that he had in the area, you know, health department, area plan, and you give him a report you want to fill that in. Yeah, so basically, you know, starting the website project, we haven't got to that point yet in the, the rollout for that. But once that does get to that point where we go over the meetings and the agendas and everything. The new system will allow for anybody to come in and run their meetings off of that and stream. So, how, how will, will they have to get with you, or they have some way to start and stop it? Or? No, we can set them up with their own accounts, and they'll be okay. able to sit there and start and stop on their own. <coughs> so they do the transcription and all that kind of good stuff on their own. Yep, absolutely. Same thing goes with health department and anyone else. <coughs> Megan Lawrence said she's coming in. You had did some work for her out there at SWC. You had, had some things to share, and I know you might hang around. Sure. She needs some questions. That's fine. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. John, we got it right. <coughs> Every. 
request. Um, first one I want to discuss with you was uh, Sarah Kane Comcast. Uh, she's asking for a, an extension. Uh, six months ago, I came to you. Uh, she had been in, or I came in and asked uh, for a permit for her back in uh, 22 originally, and uh, her permit expired. And uh, we gave her a six month <coughs> extension. It expires this Wednesday. Uh, they're still not going to have it done. Uh, they're having conflicts of interest with uh, utility companies, and they're asking for another extension. Uh, it's out on the uh, old 31 Southway. They're just asking for another six months. Refresh yourself on what, what they're doing out there. They're putting cable in, and they're having. I guess there's poles that need to be set. The electric company that set the poles haven't got their poles set yet. Is that going to interfere with your construction? It should. I think that's I guess. Well, it's okay, you. <coughs> Service that really needs to be provided. To the they, they haven't done anything wrong. They're just waiting on the other utility company. Okay. So, yeah. I guess uh, in our six months, we look forward to it. Yeah. You know, I guess if we need more later, that's what we're going to do. Okay. 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 Motion to pass permit 22 35. The renewal for another six months. Make a motion to renew it. Second. All in favor? Uh, the next permit I, I've got is from Joe Shirk. He's requesting a permit to cross County Road 100 West, uh, approximately 200 feet north of County Road 500 North. Uh, he's going to cut the road uh, to install a 15 inch main, uh, approximately 8 feet deep. Uh, it's a pretty good road, but he has put in a 15 inch main in, which is too big to order. It's draining quite a bit of ground there. So. Well, you'll have somebody out there to inspect the sweat in the back row and make sure it's. Yeah. And you're telling us you're okay with the cut then, right? Yeah. Uh, no. We, we talked about it quite a bit. Alan Long's doing the work. Okay. Uh, they know what I want as far as back row and everything. So. Going to make him put the laptop back in too. Yeah. Okay. Well, your ten motion to approve permit twenty four dash eight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion to approve studio. Then the last one I have is permit request twenty four dash nine. Uh, Joe Knotts. Uh, I can't do his last meeting, but uh, he's requesting a second driveway permit <coughs> at uh, twenty six twenty nine. Old US 31, uh, approximately 400 feet north of Olson Road. Uh, and uh, basically the same as last time, just a little bit further south than the one we discussed last time. You can put both drives in, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. We don't really need to call for either one. No, no, this was a pretty flat ground where it is going in. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to do a motion to approve permit 24 national. So moved. Second. All in favor? Terry Studio. Bring you up to date on the guys. Uh, they've been touching <coughs> quite a few holes. Uh, we've been working pretty diligently on old US 31 South and changing culverts, uh, prepping that road for uh, Finn Brown. Finn Brown plans to pay that. Uh, that's a federal aid grant. Uh, paving project. Uh, I talked to Ben and Brown. They're wanting to do that. Their first project of the year, so sometime in April is what they're thinking of starting the project. So we've been working on trying to get that road prepped. Uh, I think they've got all the culverts that they're going to change changed, uh, and they've got one tile. Make sure they're going to change out. Uh, that'll be next week. And, uh, we'll probably start from sodding that road and get that sodded. It'll be ready for the ground and come in and mill it and save it when we're ready. Well, I'll put that to the last one. 
At least that was the last I talked to them. They have another, they're going to have a pre fund meeting, which I'll you guys be invited to and get ready and stuff. So. Okay. Um, so, of course, I've been working with RMC. They're going to wrap that up this week, cutting trees, and uh, we've been doing brush cutter, continuing that work. Um, of course, it's been a light winter, so we haven't done any much of that. <coughs> Made things pretty easy for them. Uh, Friday we had bid letting. Um, I left those bids off with Paula here, so hopefully she doesn't make her. They all they all meet the standards. Everything that's supposed to be in there. So I'll ask you guys for a motion to approve those and accept them. Okay. Um, uh, I was not here, so. Okay. I don't I think we can motion to approve the uh, spring bid letting. So moved. Second. All favor. Motion carries two of the abstain. I was not against that. All right. Thank you. Um, <coughs> next thing I had to present to you today, uh, I've got a spray contract for Midwest Spray Team. Uh, I think for the last three or four years, we've used them to go along with spray or small structures and uh, large bridges. We spray about half of the large bridges each year. Uh, the contracts were fifteen thousand not to exceed fifteen thousand. And then also uh, we've been started last year we sprayed old thirty one there where the hills are in the brush. We had that whole cut and think that keeping that vegetation I'm not going to spray that again. <coughs> but uh, it's uh, for fifty two fifty for a large structure and forty two dollars for a small structure. And then I've got the county on a rotation where we divided small structures a third of the county each year. We rotate that. That's been, we've been pretty successful, I think. Keep the brush back. They've been doing us a good job. I'd like to use them again if you guys are all right with that. You have that in your budget, correct? Yes. Okay, and then I did a wish to approve the Midwest Spray Team contract. Not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars. Moved. Second. All in favor? Motion to approve. And then the last thing, I just wanted to give you an update. ADA. Uh, <coughs> last week we had uh, training for the department heads in here. I think all three of you were here. Um, we brought gave them training. Each department head for ADA <coughs> six. Uh, each department head then was given information that they could take back to their department and, and train all their employees. And then that will help us to uh, comply with our transition policy, which is being updated. And that will be given to you guys uh, later on. I think this will be the first and next. So when is it they have to have the signatures turned in by? Uh, they got 30 days. So if you haven't got your employees or their signatures turned in, Make sure you get that done. So we will have everybody in the county compliant. Done in time to turn it in and end off. So that keeps us you have to sign it to the yeah. councils involved in that as well. Yeah. Did you send them a, would you send them an email and uh and the thing so they can watch it, make sure they get it? I don't think there's a video to watch, but there's a PowerPoint. Oh, PowerPoint. Yeah, there's through. a PowerPoint. I think watch the PowerPoint, correct? Well, it's a uh, read through. Read through. Okay. Yeah. 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 Get all the information. Okay. So, that's everything I have. Unless you have anything else.
that we need to um, perform a job as I want to piece out. So anyway, it's a year of training. Um, <clears throat> we have three uh, nine one dispatchers that will be going to the caller to killer over at Jasper County. That is also free training for them. And then um, this week we'll have hazmat training for EMA volunteers and anybody that wants to uh, participate. It is through IDEM, or uh, yeah, IDEM. And it'll be on <coughs> an hour and a half to two hours, but anyway, we'll have a working supper for appreciation month for the EMAs. So they'll get to eat and do their hazmat training all at one time. So we had cleanup. Uh, we removed a lot. I sent you pictures from that. Um, we got a lot. Uh, I guess Pulaski County does want that uh, piece of equipment back and some other things. So we'll be uh, putting paperwork in front of you to sign and send it back over. Some of that military equipment. Um, <clears throat> LEPC meeting. I want to remind everybody it's at, on the 11th and it starts at six o'clock for LEPC, seven o'clock is the fire meeting, and that's down at Liberty Township. We have a couple new members that will be joining us. One is the Iron and Metal, our tier trooper, and um, Megan um, Malak will be joining our group as well, and she'll be bringing uh, Shirley Nita, and those folks will have to be voted on uh, to join the we welcome those members. Um, just want to remind everybody as well, is March is Weather Preparedness Month. So the middle of March, we'll be setting off sirens all week. And as of today, every Monday um, at the first of the month, the first Monday, we test those sirens. So not only does March uh, signify the weather month, but we do that every month throughout the year, unless it's weather preparedness <coughs> month. We don't want to falsely advertise that. So, <clears throat> and then we had Korean training that went to, that was well attended. Dave attended that as well. Um, I don't think. Do you guys have any questions on that? It was it was good. It was well presented. Um, and then back out at EMA, I just want to uh, let you guys know that our. O&R Builders gave us a quote to redo the windows and the doors out there. Um, it was just shy of 10 grand. Um, I believe Dave Carr, correct me if I'm wrong, Kerry, he didn't want to touch it. Um, we'll have Joe Shirk do another quote. Um, I've asked another local person um, if they would give us a quote. Is there anybody that you can think of or a uh, process? I did send you an email from Burns. Also, the built the building. Well, that's one of the Burns, not O and R. So, Burns is one of the Burns. Yeah. Okay. Not the one I was thinking of O and R, but Burns. So, I don't know what you want on that process. We uh, allocated twenty grand uh, for upgrades at the EMA. Uh, I really don't want to do the metal, <coughs> just with the foregoing of different changes within the county and so forth, and grant. Work. And a lot of it is going to depend on how quick they can get to it and if it's going to be, you know, if you're a year out or if you're six months out, yeah. you know, asking mm -hmm. that to make sure that will depend on a lot of Yeah, it. I know one of them is about a year out. So, uh, I mean, I know it's minor construction. But it needs to be done. It, right? I mean, yes. it needs to be done pretty quickly, I take it. And the 20000 you've already got that budgeted. Mm -hmm. It's in your budget, so, okay. Yeah, so if you want us to get some more quotes, if you think of anybody else, uh, like to use local if we can, and <coughs> reach out to them. And sure. If you want to bring us by, I mean, we can do emails back and forth or whatever you recommend, Holly, but uh, the money has been allocated. Right. I just need to, I just, you just need the bids. Yeah. Okay. Um, that brings us to uh, Megan Malott had talked to me Saturday um, in reference to an office out of the EMA building. We do have an extra office, so um, we'll welcome soil and water out there. And if she needs an office, that's up to you guys, but we do have one available. And then the health department was asking me about vehicles and grants, and I said, well, we have a Durango though 
just kind of sits there. So, uh, but we'll have to remove the radio and the lights from it for them to utilize that. That's up to you guys, but. I, don't, I was thinking that dream was headed to the auction. I thought we had issues with it. Um, I never had issues with it. After somebody said that there was, I we've been driving it on events. It drove pretty well. A couple of things I can see would. Uh, I mean, it has a lot of miles on it, and it's older, so that's up to you. So once the siren and the, or yeah, all that stuff is taken out. I mean, <clears throat> Couple of things. The health department has not got has not got a fuel budget, a repair budget. Mm -hmm. They they got nothing. Nothing. Hey, I keep saying that. That's okay. Have not got nothing. To <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Be yourself. Just be yourself. <clears throat> Hate got nothing. To <laughs> budget wise, as far as you know, repairs, mm -hmm. fuel, gas, whatever. Yeah. So that that thing. creates a problem. I mean. Yeah. Well. And the other thing is, you give it to them, and then Casey says, I need a vehicle for Ashton. Well, there you go. I mean, I'm just saying, that if you were, well, and other departments would come in. It's up to you. you know, so, it's just kind I mean, of, that's, yeah, that's a, I, I can't agree. I mean, they don't want to can one, just for the fact that we have a lot of offices that do, think they might have to have four to five vehicles or have to drive them, so. I think so. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't think Denise is. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I told her I'd ask you guys, so. Yeah. She had asked. I know there's an issue why she's needing that. I mean, I we pay mileage to employees to, to travel now to do yeah. their jobs. So. Yeah. And I know he does got to carry quite a bit of equipment in his car. I do know that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we pass vehicles around, so. Yeah. I mean, you guys are the. It's there. Yeah, yeah. saying go to auction. Yeah. I think it's going to open up a can of worms here. Well, we'll we'll still utilize it. So if somebody was just asking, I mean, I'll utilize, utilize it for my volunteers. So I guess what we're telling you this yeah. time now. Yeah, just hang hey, on. Okay. You keep it to yourself. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. That's fine with us. Yeah. yeah. And um, I double, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off all the EMS uh, contract and so forth. Um, I did double check with Alicia. She, they are scheduled till the end of the month for our ambulance service because they know our contract right now last Friday. And I haven't heard back. They are scheduled to the end of the month. Yep. To come in or? But that's to continue not, service. But that's not including putting the ambulance back in Akron. My, yeah, this we is just a problem, right? Nope. <coughs> you haven't officially heard from anybody other than talking to all this. Correct. Okay. So Lutheran management is kicking this can down the road as far as they can. Yeah. That's what they're doing. I mean, it needs to be out there. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's got nothing to do with us. We're responding when we have, <coughs> have uh, been asked, and, and we're not getting response back from management of Lutheran. This contract, so it's, I got I know the blame's out there on us, but it's, it's got nothing to do with us. I got a little timeline I'll tell everybody, and then Wes, if you want a copy of it, you're more than welcome to do it after the, after the thing. Um, basically, what, what started out, you know, we started negotiation, we give our we hired Ice Miller, we gave the contract to Ice Miller to start filling out with all the holidays and everything. They figured the cop we were supposed to have the contract signed by January. 15th, I believe, at the time. Um, our attorneys, Ice Miller, said, hey, they're not going to have it quite done by then, so let, let's, let's agree on an extension. So we all agreed on, mutually agreed on an extension. Um, we agreed on the extension till March the 1st. So then it goes down. Um, <coughs> let's see. They started to go, they wanted another extension coming up till uh, April 1st. So on the 27th, that was on the 21st, they sent us that. February 21st, they sent us, they wanted just a flat extension till April 1st. 
to for them to sign to review the contract and go over the contracts more. So our response back on February 27th was we'll extend it. We'll extend it till till May 1st if you want to, but you must put the third ambulance back in Akron by March 1st. And we have not heard back from. Them. They have not responded one way or another, but the ambulance is not back in Akron as, as of Saturday. He was over there, it was not back in Akron. So, so there's where we're at. Um, I don't know if they're going to negotiate, I don't know what's going on, um, but we do got a backup plan. <coughs> and what happens if, if, if after a while they decide they're not going to negotiate, we fall back to Heartland, Heartland Ambulance Service. That's the second bidder on the things so that we have to. For the ambulance review committee, um, that I mean, you haven't really established that in your meetings so forth. Um, them continuing, you know, the EMS board group, but I will send them an email of your timeline and so forth today. The review committee. Mm -hmm. and so you, you got you got copy of it too, right? Yeah. I'm not for sure. If you can, if you can, if you can email Jerry, me Jerry, that. Jerry, did send that to you? I'm not I'm for sure. sure. Okay. We'll make copies. We'll make sure you don't get copies. <coughs> we'll get that sent out. And then, uh, last but not least, um, moving forward, uh, I've had a lengthy discussion uh, with my deputy assistant, uh, Krista, in the CJIS security. Um, we're going to stop doing that. So anybody moving forward that's a contractor in your facility, it's up to them to pay somebody to do a, their own background checks uh, for your buildings. It's very time consuming for us. So if you contract with somebody and it takes us a year to get everybody vested, then you uh, regroup and you bid another contractor services. Um, that, that's a lot. Of, that's very time consuming for us on our end coming and going and routing our schedule around theirs. And typically what a contractor should do, they should uh, get those um, on their own recognizance to Indiana State Police. They can get their own background checks done there. Um, I know one of your prior services did that. And then moving forward, that service didn't have that luxury, so we took that upon us, and that's, that's a lot of work on our end, so. Anybody so, figure in any kind of bids or and so forth that they have a large crew coming into your courthouses, um, it's a recommended practice that they have background checks before they go and maybe clean those offices or whatever working in those offices. Um, okay, so according to that statute, the only one we would have secured us uh, besides the jail, of course, would be the courthouse because they got security to get in and out. Is that correct? Yeah. That's this building wouldn't qualify for that. Is that am, I, am I thinking right or not? Well, that's, I mean, the, your own department heads know what they have. So I, you know, we, we deal with courts a lot on non-terminal agreements. Um, and we have CGIS requirements here. We do not have CGIS requirements here. So at the end, so that's correct. Okay. Probation's included in that. Mm -hmm. Well, that'd be probation. Probation needs to be secure as well. Yep. Yeah, so what we do is we make your departments that go into those buildings. It's their requirement by CGIS to be CGIS certified. Our cleaning staff and our maintenance um, are CGIS certified, and Krista tries to remind them, or she does remind them, uh, to make sure those <coughs> tests are done. Now it is on a yearly basis, correct, Krista? It is now, yeah. It is now yearly. So um, most of not all of them are compliant. We have one person that's not in compliant with that, so. But other than that, that, that's a lot of work. And for you to compensate on your end or coming out of your budget, budget it's not necessary. It's up to the contractor. Wouldn't you think, Holly? Like, yes. So with the one contractor, I will tell you, we just finished up and it's been a chore. Last year, it was a big chore for this guy. Mm -hmm. So, that's all I have. Unless you have any questions. Anything? Well, I just said you that time. Okay. Thank
Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Yes, Okay, uh, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pretty day out there, isn't it? Looks well, tropical. Don't tropical. Okay, yeah. almost. <laughs> Bring me my pina colada. That's right. It's five o'clock somewhere. That's right. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on what's going on in the county in the coroner's office. Um, so far, we served 11 families this year, and I wanted to let you know that, uh, like for instance, during the month of January, there were 16 total deaths in our county, but of those deaths, the coroner's office investigated eight of them, so that's 50%. Um, last month, we had nine deaths that occurred in this county, and we actually investigated three of those. So. Um, We've had a total of 25 deaths in the county and we've investigated 11. Of that, we've had three autopsies and with that we get uh, toxicology that's done with that. We haven't conducted any independently on any of the other people and we have not done any labs on anybody else. So, so far this year we have uh, three pending causes of death because we're awaiting the autopsy results. And um, we've had one person who uh, took their life and then um, seven natural <coughs> deaths. So that's kind of what we've been doing lately. Um, coming up this week, on Thursday we have the Leadership Academy coming by to visit us and they'll get to see the Forensic Center taking a tour of that. And uh, later this week, on Saturday, public service announcement, there are two fish fries for your uh, dining convenience. One is down at Grass Creek with the Lions Club and the other will be at Abinabi Township uh, with the Abi Fire Department. So some of our team will be both places, probably I'm guessing, and we'll look forward to seeing you. There. So no dishes that night either. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the advertisement. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Travis. Just a few things here. I emailed out the uh, annual jail report last week. Hopefully, somebody got it. Is there any questions or anything over that? I think there's a lot to it. There is. Yeah, yeah. Get what yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, over. it's a pretty comprehensive. People would probably be amazed if they knew how much was involved. Yeah. And the nice thing about that is you can really <coughs> use those five years statistics. Yeah. You can definitely start seeing an outline pattern. You know, you can see the the trend down around COVID time and everything else. So I think this year we're finally back to pre-COVID numbers, <coughs> pre -COVID numbers as far as the uh, jail's concerned. So um, so I did get a, a host acknowledgement agreement from Andy with the city concerning Spillman. I'm talking to them, basically it's just saying that we know that RPD is coming on board, so for your guys' uh, viewing pleasure. Need, need a signature on that. Even, even a motion. motion and a signature, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I heard Dave Bush then to uh, approve the acknowledgement of uh, RDP coming on to our school. Yeah. 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 I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Motion carries three. Yeah. I think it'll be a good deal. Yeah. 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 I guess according to Spillman and Andy, that's the initial step to get them rocking and rolling with Spillman. So it was us acknowledging that they're coming on board with us. So. Um, <coughs> looking for permission or um, found a 2017 Ford Explorer that's actually completely outfitted. Um, it was turned in from Westfield Police Department <coughs> when they bought a new one. And it was supposed to go to an outlying agency around there because they left all the law enforcement equipment in there. Um, radar, cage, siren, lights, everything. Um, and then it ended up going to auction. So we looked at it last week. Um, it's 2017, it's got 84,000 miles on it. Um, we got them down to 15.5 on that. So I think between the insurance settlement on the course that got hit out on the uh, out on 31 during the ice, 
in the two vehicles that we had an option, we'll be able to, to cover that no problem. So, so I'm looking for a blessing to be able to purchase that. Yeah, seems like, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, last thing I have, um, and I kicked it around last year and didn't get around to it, but we're looking at purchasing a, they call them speed trailers, but basically it's got the, uh, the speed limit on there and then the displayed speed of whatever the vehicle's going. They're really nice PR tools um, to put in areas where we get speeding complaints all the time. It'll all also give us historical data on that, so we can go back and we can pull data from those and see if there is if there truly is a problem in that area and if there's any type of, type of target times that we can go out there and take enforcement action instead of just sitting around and, and wondering. Um, so we actually get new historical data from that. So kicked it around last year, didn't get around to it this year. Um, I think it's something we definitely need to invest into. I've got plenty of money. I've got over $13,000 in the accident report money. Um, that money has to be used for either accident investigation or prevention. I don't know how much more prevention we get than this as far as a reduction in speed. So um, I've got a quote here for 7,800. We're still working out some of the details on it, but it won't go over, I would say, eight thousand dollars. So, um, if you guys are good with that, yeah. yeah. The motion to approve. I think you have to spend eight thousand dollars on sign. You got that version more now. Will that eight be enough? Right. Yeah, I mean, it'll be. I would say probably nine, just to be safe. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion for nine thousand. Second. Okay. And we've got that. Like I said, we've got that money in our accident yeah. report yeah. fund. Yeah, so we won't have any issues with that. So. Um, I'll work on her or work with her to get that final details on. Um, I know one thing is a thousand dollars to have it delivered. I think we could probably drive to Kansas City, pick it up cheaper than that. So, um, so we'll get it ironed out with that then. So, um, other than that, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you want to make any comment about what happened Saturday? I uh, heard the thank yous in order. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. definitely thank yous in order. So, uh, um, we obviously put the press release out. We really can't release a whole lot more than that, other than um, the SROs were, were on scene at the school when the, when the incident took place. And I mean, they handled it. Rick Better handled it, you know, excellent. Um, most people that were there had no idea that anything had even taken place. Um, so, they were able to, to get that individual out of the building and secure, you know, relatively quickly. So, shout out to to him and Ryan Utter and Ryan Haney, they were the on-duty staff, and then uh, you know the school administration team for was handled very well, very professionally. So, yes, thank you. Oh, thank you, boys. Yes, yeah. definitely. It's nice knowing their SROs are doing their job. Oh, absolutely, yep. that they're there. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, if you ever wonder wonder why you need SROs, you know, it's just a good yep. example of it. So, yep. thank you. I just got a paper for you to sign. Okay. Okay. Um, there are payments. One. One more picture. Uh, First thing I wanted to go over with is uh, I don't know if you guys have checked out in that room here where I got the new furniture and chairs. That's good. And also at the courthouse on the first floor. All those are done over there also. Um, I know that IT uh, did some stuff for the public defenders, and we got a table moved in there and got their room secured for them. And uh, we're getting keys for those. I gave a key to her and a key to everyone also to keep that room secured. Um, I never really hit on the, the bathrooms here on uh, the annex on the first floor. Uh, I believe that they are now officially handicapped accessible. Um, I got a few holes to fix in the wall where I had to move some stuff. And I'm still working on that. Um, I wanted to go over the lighting. I talked to you guys about the, the LED lighting and changing these fluorescents out because I've been having so many problems with them. Um, the ballasts are 50 bucks each. There's two ballasts. The bulbs are 15 bucks a piece. There's usually three to four bulbs. Maybe some have got two. Um, I can put an LED light and replace it for $42, just the cost of the light. So I think it's well worth me <coughs> starting to do a room at a time um, with your guys' plus. I'd like I have a budget for it. Total cost if I rechanged every single light at the courthouse and the annex building would be 66000 um, but I, I do have that in my budget, but I'd like to do that in a room at a time and not do it all at once. It's just kind of a gradual thing. 
Mm -hmm. Sharon's blessing. I believe I showed you guys a light this morning, and, yep. and there's a reason why I need to start doing this. Yep, we do. I appreciate it. Um, in Superior Court and Judge Heller's office, the half door is installed, and uh, the door latch will be done here this week, but uh, for the security part of that, that's done now. So I don't know if you guys have a chance to look at it. It looks really good. <coughs> um, I wanted to go over the trees on the courthouse. Uh, we know we talked about this a few times, the giant pine trees out there that they call the Christmas lights. Um, as you guys know, I didn't get to plug them in this last year because the squirrels ate all the lights off of them. If I would have lit them up, it would have burned to the ground. <laughs> so um, I know a lot of people were upset. I actually got to meet a lot of people I didn't know, and they asked me why I didn't do this. <laughs> um, so moving forward on that, I wanted to remove them while the ground was frozen, but the ground really never froze. It's, it's been a kind of weird winter. Um, I've got two coats um, on that hilltop. Um, I would Akron put a quote in of $1,450 to remove the trees, and they guarantee me they will not hurt the yard. And Arbor Gold also put one in, and their bid was $3,450. Um, so with your blessing, I would like to ask that I could hire Hilltop and get those trees removed. $1,450. You got that in your budget, correct? Yes, I did. And those, those trees, we've had some comments. People think we need to keep them, but they're 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 at the end of their life. Yeah, they are at the very. I've had uh, three different people tell me they're at the end of their, their lives. So. And, and correcting both Hilltop and Art. Yeah, they both commented that they're. Yeah, they said they could believe they've lasted this long. They said they need to come down. They're 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 dying. So, and uh, my, my goal is to before the end of summer and everything too is to get uh, new trees put in there. I'm going to try to get some 12 to 15 foot trees in there, back in that spot, get lights on them, and, and that way we can have Christmas lighting again next year. That's the goal. That's good. Like yeah. <laughs> I've got some email I'd like to forward to you. Yeah. <laughs> and I told everybody to contact you. That's why I, I apologize. But, uh, uh, yes, go ahead. I'll, I'll make the motion, I guess. I'll second it. <laughs> um, uh, I want to talk about the chillers at the courthouse, which is the air conditioning for the courthouse. Um, I've been working on the number one chiller for about two and a half months. Uh, Core has actually been out here probably 12 times just in February, just trying to help me get it figured out. Um, number one chiller is going down. I'm running only half of it right now because uh, two of the compressors are out inside the building. <coughs> um, number two chiller is the backup chiller for in the summer, so when it's really, really hot, it can kick in to help uh, get the courthouse cool because it takes a lot to cool that courthouse down. So I just basically have given you guys a heads up that uh, the chiller, I am having problems with it. And uh, my goal of this year is to try to keep it going as long and strong as I can. Um, and I'm gonna try to start saving up some money from my budget, to maybe to encumber something or something for next year to get that chiller replaced. So. <coughs> um, last, what I got is cleaning service. The contract for the clean, current cleaning service is up March 10th. Um, and that's Tracy Peters Cleaning Service. Um, and she has put a new bid in. Her bid is the same as what it is, has been currently been, and it's been 100, 104,000 is her bid. I had uh, two other ones um, put in. The one I can't accept only because they did an estimate and not a bid. Um, she wouldn't give me an exact amount. She said she wanted to clean for a while, and I told her I, I just absolutely had to have a bid. I couldn't do it on an estimate. And the other one I got in is Final Touch Cleaning Services. Um, she just gave it to me on Friday. And her bid is $94,200. So with it being a week away, I know that I gotta get something done. Um, so with your guys' blessing, I would like to move forward and either take one or the other and see what you guys would like. Well, who was the $94,000? Finishing touch cleaning service, <coughs> and she's local. Um, she actually she lives here in Fulton County. Um, she's got some good references also, and uh, so that's something that you guys would like me to do on that. Um, do you know does the finishing touching got any background mm -hmm. checks? Uh, as I know of right now, no, I would have to get that done. 
that would be the only thing. It's got to be yeah. done by the 10th, is, is that correct? Your contract expires on the 10th? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Is that doable? And, and there's only if they start that process. Uh, uh, they do that. She and her crew is only other, there's only two to three people. Okay. I saw how long that process took to be certified. I could, she'd have to contact state police and ask them. I don't. Know I don't. I don't either. Anybody got any idea? Travis got any idea what it takes? I didn't know state police did see just background, so no, I have no. They idea. do a when you get a full background. ISP is the one that does that, but you got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, a time frame of I think all they have to do is make an appointment with them or or get online to do that. It's 10 grand. Yeah, that was big. That, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, like, so you check them out, get references. So I guess it, yeah, you know, I they're doing, she's doing some other companies here in town too, so it's not. Uh, Talk to uh, Tracy too, and, and you know, and they've been doing a good job recently too. It's just I got it. It's the contracts up. I got to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Do we? Uh, yep. If you, uh, yep. Do we take the next final touches pending the uh, background, background check? check? Yeah. I mean, you have to get on. Have her get on that so they can. They can yeah. Do so I'll make a motion to accept uh, finishing touches for 94200 as long as they get their background check done in time for the end. I'll second. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Chad, Mason, Casey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
jurisdiction and the pecking order of how because that, that that's what I need to know. Okay, so we're not federal. We're we're in the federal building and we are county and we work with state. So it's like a cross between we we have both regulations, county and state regulations. Do you enter to the state in any way? On some states. <coughs> I mean are they going to be okay if you're not in that building? Um, I would have to look into that. Other soil and water districts, they're completely separate from okay. that. If that's the question that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I just don't know if you have a higher NRT that's... No, so there are soil out. and water districts where they just outgrown the office of burn because they have more staff and more county support. Um, so it just depends. Each district's different. I would love to, to give a presentation to the whole entire county, countywide to show you what soil and water does because there's a lot of people that, oh, they just do with soil. We do so much more than soils. We really do. And if I had the opportunity to display that, I would love to be able to do that. I know Gail commented about you coming out there. Is there, have you checked it? Is there enough office space? Is it room enough? I, I don't know. I have not been out there. Would you mind me coming out there? Maybe? I'll get the Gail on that. So it seems like there's a lot we have to do before we get to there. You need right. to find out if it's going to cause you any problems. What are you going to need out there? Is it going to cost the county any more money? I mean, are we going to have to do anything special out there? And Josh maybe can answer that better than. I think one thing that she's running into <coughs> right now is our hands are even tied in the building that she's in. In the past, we've had to try, we've, we've tried to do certain things for her for a connectivity. And with the rules and regulations with that federal building, we're actually spending more money to bring certain services in rather than should we have her on a county-owned property building. Um, she doesn't have the ability to sit there and get all the access to the items that she needs currently. And of course, with her growing in multiple individuals, it makes it even more difficult. Um, she just doesn't have the same type of uh, services available to her like the majority of us, the majority of us have here, um, whether it be the highway or wherever. So, I take it you pay rent out there in that building right now. We do. <clears throat> she. And the other thing I'll say is right now she's extremely segregated. Even, for example, even though the county, her page is on our website, and it will be on the new website. For example, she's still using Gmail accounts uh, for email, all those types of things. It would be nice to sit there if, if she's definitely a county entity to bring her in. So you can't group. bring her into our email accounts the way she set up? Is that what I'm hearing? No, we can on that, but that's just kind of a, you know, from the from the start, it's been that way. And, you know, she's talked with Devin and I a little bit, and, you know, we've made her aware of certain services that we can provide for her, but it's still a lot of that connectivity side of things is a gray area. And, and again, like you three had mentioned, finding out exactly where she stands within that gray area is going to be first and foremost, and then we can make a determination where we can go from there. Okay. Okay. If you want to do some checking out for us, absolutely. Check out Josh and Gail. 
see if it worked for you, see what you're going to need, if it kind of cost us any money to get you out there, or whatever. Okay. The, the one thing I would say about EMA, too, that I really haven't brought up to the three of you, but with our budget this year, one of the things we're looking at is we're still paying a reoccurring fee out of EMA uh, for phone service and internet service. And we've been looking at possibilities of connecting them directly to us, like what we've done with the highway. Um, so that would hopefully down the road reduce some costs as well. Um, but I don't have any hard numbers yet. Deborah and I have been in the process of talking with various companies. But that that's, that's something you've been looking at, whether we do the switch with the switch yes. or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The one thing about soil and water goes hand in hand with emergency management as well. Um, there's a lot of grants. Um, they are called out during emergencies and items and spills. Um, it, it's a nice partnership, I will say, for Megan and then for her um, educating the public. It's no, it's no different than emergency management where folks really don't understand what that is either, but it brings money back into the community and makes us a stronger force. I will say that. So when she asked me about it, it was a no-brainer, and like I said, we have an extra office out there, so we'd be glad to help her as we can figure out that logistic point for you. I would really like to do a presentation county-wide to show you guys what soil and water districts can, how we can invest in our county and, and come together as one, because there's so many... Everybody says, what do you do? Well, I do multiple things. And if we can just display, it's not just soil and water. There's so much more than that. And we can we can do great things in this community, like backyard habitats, urban gardens, um, or a community garden would be nice. I mean, there's, there's so much potential. And I have the energy and enthusiasm to be able to do it. So I just need the support. So, she likes to play with her. She does. I do love to play with her. So um, that's just something. You also got your truck and trailer. We do have an educational truck and trailer coming. That's going to be huge. Um, we kept it county, though. We, we tried. So um, the Limitech in Talma, one of the places you guys said not very many people know about at the legislative breakfast on Saturday. Um, yes, so my board's getting ready to um, figure out the dynamics of all of that, getting it narrowed down, this coming up board meeting, and then it's gonna be in the process of being built and hopefully available by August of this year. That is our goal. So yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, if you want to set up a presentation, let us know. Yeah. If this ain't big enough, we'll find some well see if we can, you know, we can go to fairgrounds or something else. Absolutely. I'll come up with one. I'll get a hold of you. Okay. Anything else for you guys? If there was any interest in uh, helping you guys with that, I mean, we'd be glad to help you put a video together for your presentation. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Can, I, can I get with you? Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know your name. I'm sorry. Steve. Steve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, TC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, just find out on the Steve yeah. level thing what you're referring to. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Okay. Julie. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Wait a minute. Nice job. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I did bring some tours and stuff. You guys want to see that. Um, but really want to give you an update on what's been happening at the chamber um, beginning of the year and then a little bit about tourism as well. Um, as you know, we are moved. We are um, done with that, so officially 112 East 8th Street. Um, the first sign is up. The permanent sign above the piano keys is coming. So hopefully that um, distinction will come soon and people will know where, exactly where we are. Um, this is the time of our heavy membership renewal season. We do membership renewals in January and then again in July um, for those that are more seasonal in nature. Um, and those have been coming in response has been good for that this year. Um, and then just a couple of reminders on our communications. We have our business minute, which is the e-newsletter. Um, it goes out to you about, well, we're over 900 now, 900 um, employers, employees, and community leaders in Northern Indiana. 
Um, so if there's ever anything negative, if you ever need to share anything in the business minute, that's a really good resource to get it out. And then I know like some employers, um, they'll take that information and then disperse it amongst all their employees. So it's hitting probably about 1,500 people um, every two weeks. And then um, we have more and more people utilizing our community events calendar on our website. So um, as you talk to organizations um, and people need to just get the word out there, I know our libraries are using that every month and then um, Work One is using that for their ongoing trainings um, and then businesses use that for different specials. Like Green Oak has their spring sales and all of that on the community calendar. Um, that's open to anyone to enter events in there. So um, we want to continue to tell people about that as well. Um, and then recently, we um, engage in services with a contractor to really review everything that we do as a chamber. So every um, communication that I send out, every event that we do, every program, committee that I'm on, we're going through everything um, to see how, what is the impact that that is having on the, on the county, where do we maybe need to focus more time, less time, and revamping everything that we're doing, our entire program of work. Uh, it's been a really good long process, um, but with that we're um, undergoing a five week campaign um, the month of March to really provide Fulton County businesses with different opportunities that are available to them through the chamber. Um, so we have about 20 volunteers working on that project with us and um, going out talking to businesses and nonprofits of all levels, um, seeing how they can utilize what's available to them through the chamber. Um, some of the programming that we've had over the last couple of months, um, and I'll end with the end of 23 Small Business Saturday in, our, in Small Business Season went really well. We had a program um, inviting the public to go out and go shopping, visiting small businesses, and just really encouraging shopping small, thinking small first um, before hitting the big box stores at the end of the, the year during the holiday shopping season. We had 29 participating <coughs> businesses. Um, I didn't write the right number down, but we had about 300 visits during a two-week period, and we were able to, during the campaign, give away $500 in chamber dollars, keeping money local here. So a um, very good, successful um, project for our small businesses. A new campaign, or a new program that we're offering this year is called Coffee and Conversation. Our members are wanting more opportunities to network um, with each other, learn about what's happening in the community, talk about different um, issues. So. The second Thursday of each month, we're meeting at Geretti's place. It's free for members, so any of our county employees um, can attend those. Um, it's just a time to get together with other members, hear what's going on, make connections with businesses. Um, so y'all are invited. Seven thirty at what time? Seven thirty at Geretti's. It's in the morning. <laughs> 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 I'll meet you there at the next one. Okay. okay. We'll be there a little early so we have breakfast. Okay. <laughs> um, we just, as you guys know, we just wrapped up our legislative breakfast series, and a huge thank you um, to, to you commissioners for um, filling in last minute. We appreciate that. Um, but we did have a really good series this year, um, on average 50 in attendance um, at all three. Of course, we like to um, go around to Kiwana, Rochester, and Akron. Um, very well received, very well attended. Um, we'll, of course, look forward to doing that again next year. But. Um, Seriously, a huge thank you to everyone who stepped up. Um, we had some issues with our speakers, but thank you guys for um, bringing that together. Now that I know that you're last minute people, we'll wait until. Um, <laughs> Ryan time. likes the last minute. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> the <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you a dumb question, maybe. Do we still got a funding agreement with you guys? So you guys are members of the chamber, is how that works. Okay, so there's no funding agreement, but we can do. Okay. Yep, you're members. Okay, all right. I didn't remember that. There's always opportunities. I know. I know. No, I'm not a volunteer. <laughs> I just wanted to. I didn't remember seeing a funding agreement yeah, coming no. up for you. That's the reason why I was kind of. Yeah, that's why I didn't go. Look, I'm not necessarily yeah, no okay. department head, but. Okay. Yeah, you guys are members. So, um, women in business, we had a really um, successful first event um, this year in February. We had over 60 women in attendance, which is uh, about twice as many as normal. Um, so what that told us, it told us a lot about what um, women in the in the working community are looking for. So we used to do the um, quarterly events. We're not going to do that um, the rest of this year. I'm actually canceling two of those. Um, we'll do one uh, in the fall, and then we'll do a larger 
um, women's conference next February. So we're that's one of the things through this consultant that we've been looking at. So we're going to change up the format for that. Um, I don't know exactly what it will look like yet. I'm just as curious as anyone, but we had really good attendance, really positive feedback, and so now that we know a little bit more of what the women are looking for, we want to make sure that we're delivering accordingly. Um, and then the last program I'll talk about that we're doing is our Business Connectors lunches. Those are quarterly networking events, and our first one for this year is next Wednesday at the Elks, and that's again another free opportunity for our members um, to come together. But we do cap it at 40, so if anyone's interested, please register um, for that. But we're going to have um, Wings, etc. Um, catering will be at the Elks, and then um, Woodlawn Occupational Health will do a uh, little spotlight on the services that they can offer employers um, and how we can partner um, Woodlawn Occupational Health with the employers in the county, and then we'll have a chance for everyone to, um, to, to talk as well. Um, a couple of the committees that we've formed and we're working on this year, one is the um, Fulton County Marketing Committee. This is different from tourism, which is um, really trying to bring visitors into the area. The marketing committee, we're specifically focusing on um, increasing our workforce. So we want to make sure that new families, that people who relocate to the county, feel welcome right away, that they have the resources available to them, that they know where to go for um, childcare, what schools are offered, um, different programs, ways to get involved in the community. So we're putting together um, welcome bags. We've had it um, about, we have over 30 businesses um, participating in that, but we're putting together bags that we can distribute to um, our mortgage lenders, our realtors, and our title companies to help welcome people either um, new to the county or relocating, or I'm sorry, new to the county or moving back to the county, help them get involved a little bit more quickly than just kind of hoping that a neighbor says hi or something like that. Um, so we're, with that, we're also putting together a digital relocation guide. Um, we're going to use a lot of the information that tourism has. Um, we'll have um, just it'll links to everything that's available online, all of the references, resources that are available, lists of restaurants, churches, recreation options. All of that will be made available on um, our website later this year. So really looking forward to that. Um, and then also in the marketing committee, we're partnering with Channel 4. They're putting together some promotional videos for us, so they're getting capturing footage of different festivals, events, scenery throughout the county, so looking at the lakes, the parks, uh, camping opportunities, putting together, uh, I call it promo commercials for Fulton County, so we're excited about that as well. Um, let's see, we've already started talking about this pretty heavily. Um, the Blacktop Cruisers Car Club is um, <coughs> going to be hosting the car show this year. Um, but the car show will continue. Um, we, the chamber is taking that on, so we'll be hosting um, both the Chili Cook-Off and the car show. We're gonna be treating them as separate events during the same time. So um, we're looking ahead, that'll be October 12th. I'll come to you for official um, request later. And no, we're not gonna get on the courthouse long, we know. Um, but we're gonna try to keep the car show as, as similar as we can to previous years, so people know what to expect. And it's, the premier car show um, of Northern Indiana, we want to make sure to keep it that way. Um, so luckily we have a lot of guidance and the car club is very happy to help. So um, I'm hoping to see if that takes off very well. So we're already meeting, talking about that, um, starting the, the marketing on the car show and then the chili cook off. Of course, we'll do that marketing later this summer. Um, Leadership Academy, very happy it's going well. We have 16 people um, in the cohort this year and graduation is set for May 21st. Um, and then the Fulton County Child Care Committee that we established last year, um, we're meeting about quarterly. Um, we're looking at um, in, in involving service providers and large employers talking about the needs for child care in the area and then how do we partner or how do, how do we connect the providers with the employers? How do we um, establish relationships between them so that we can make sure that our working families have adequate child care um, so we can continue to, to grow a strong workforce here in Fulton County. Um, the gala is scheduled for April 27th. We're accepting award nominations for that through next Friday. Um, so anyone deserving of, of business professional of the year, business, um, business of the year, or emerging business awards, we're taking those nominations now through next Friday. Um, and then we'll, of course, make those announcements 
April 27th, we'll be at the Akron Community Center, um, and we'll be uh, a little Kentucky Derby theme, so looking forward to that. Um, and then a couple of boards that I serve on, I just want to give brief reports, the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Um, I, I work with them to complete their 2023 annual report as a, um, an ODAN, which is a certain designation in the Main Street, uh, the Indiana Main Street program. Um, so we got our 23 annual report done. We have a couple things that we need to go back um, and add to, but everything's looking good to keep our designation for, for this year. And then um, we helped do some advertising. Rochester High School hosted Girls Semi-State in January. We put together a little Welcome to Rochester um, poster with places where they can eat and shop while they're here. Um, so I'm happy to, to partner with uh, our schools and anybody who's, who's hosting events to, to help welcome visitors. Um, and then the Fulton County Tourism Commission, um, of course, funded through the innkeepers tax. Um, we're working very heavily on making updates to our website and our brochures. We um, have brochures like this around, so we have shopping, dining, recreation, venues, and lodging. No, venues, yeah, and lodging available. Um, we are out of shopping and dining. We ordered a couple thousand, we're out of them, but then we've realized that we need to make some changes. Um, so we're making changes to both the brochures and our website, um, and then we'll get those ordered and, and distributed to our hotels, um, hopefully still this, in the next couple of months. It takes a lot um, because people do want the print format, especially when they're coming to visit, and with stores always opening, and. Um, new restaurants or restaurants that are seasonal and um, new, th new things popping up. Um, it's pretty cumbersome, but we're working diligently on that right now. So hopefully, um, hopefully in the next couple months, everything will be updated. Um, our website will have, there's, I know some businesses that have closed, we'll get those out, um, new ones added and, and make it more, um, just more up to date. And then we um, are advertising um, in the Travel Indiana, which is um, just a, a tourism magazine, and Visit Indiana, which is our state magazine um, for tourism. We have advertising in both of those. And then new this year, we are um, being included in the brochure guide for Visit Indiana. So in um, this one, we'll have a link to the, this guide, which is published at the Sentinel. Um, they've allowed us the opportunity just to go ahead and put it right in there. So anybody who's interested in Fulton County will get a link to the online version of, of this guide, um, which is everything Fulton County related. Um, and then the last thing that we're working on, we haven't updated our rat cards in a little while. Um, this still has our old logo and everything. So we're working on those um, the, the first half of this year so we can get those, we're printing about 10,000. Um, it'll be distributed to rest stops, hotels throughout the whole state. So um, that's a honestly a really huge undertaking, but it has a list of all of our ongoing festivals and events in the county, but we'll get those out um, before the big travel season. So um, that's what's going on in tours and work. Wow, busy, busy, busy. That's a lot. <laughs> so if you're wondering what the chamber does, that's, a, I mean, honestly, this is the highlights um, of what we're doing is, well, it's just being open for everybody who calls in and says, hey, I'm visiting or I'm moving here or where can I go do this or that. Um, we, you know, we're the referral source for, for a lot of people, so. I just wonder this kind of off the subject, but does the chamber have anything to do with the sign, the industrial park sign down there to the north end of town that's been crashed? Nope. I'm just curious. Nope. Well, see know who's in charge of it. And if I remember correctly, I think it's David. I just talk to him, David Heidi. Um, David Heidi, I'm pretty sure that's You mean Becca was that the whole or David? Just David, no. Just David. Just David. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, because Michael didn't know anything about it. But... Yeah, because he, at some point he was helping with that area. I don't know if he's still the contact person though, uh, but he'd yeah. be a good starting point. Yeah. I'll leave this. I'll make it look prettier, but I'll leave stuff up here for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, guys. Trent, do you have anything you want to?
Uh, just uh, update, you know, the plan is black and will be paved since it gets warm consistently we have to do it. So hopefully by the end of May it'll be done, completed outside of waiting on them to do their thing, which, yes. Um, the other thing, I just want to thank you all, and Gail and her crew and Josh for coming out to the uh, City Hall here two or three weeks ago and help us get started in coordination with our police departments uh, on that. That's, I know my department is excited about uh, the efficiencies that we're going to gain by working together on that. So I want to thank all of you, you know, all of you for that and your open mindedness to putting this thing together. We appreciate you guys. <coughs> So I have ARPA, well, I got WTH. We have, uh, you guys saw this, it's uh, somebody wanting some of our uh, layer, access to the layers on our mapping. So we're going to a motion to approve the <coughs> map data application agreement with WTH and uh, CoreLogic. So moved. Second. In all favor? Motion carries three and We have uh, resolution 03042024. It's a resolution updating the American Rescue Plan uh, Act funds. Uh, this will be updating the current resolution we have, which is 11152021. Uh, just updating the board members and a little bit of language because uh, the state keeps changing things around. So. So whereas on November 15, 2021, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners did uh, adopt resolution number 11152021, a resolution designating American Rescue Plan Fund Act funds. And whereas the U.S. Department of the Treasury updated the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds interim financial or final rule effective September 20th, 2023. And whereas the commissioners would like to officially declare ARPA committee to consist of two Fulton County council members and one county commissioner. And whereas the Fulton County Board of Commissioners find the need to amend the ordinance to officially establish an ARPA committee to be compromised of one appointment of a member of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners and two appointments of the Fulton County Council and the auditor as a non-voting advisor. And whereas the Fulton County Board of Commissioners finds a need to provide financial assistance to organizations who provide a service to respond to the public health emergency with respect to COVID-19 or its negative impacts on the interim final rule uh, is updated as follows. Four. Therefore, be it resolved by the Fulton County Board of Commissioners that the ARPA committee is hereby established to include one appointment of either member of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, two appointments of the members of the Fulton County Council, and the County Auditor as a non voting advisor. The Fulton County Board of Commissioners also hereby resolves to provide financial assistance to organizations to provide service to respond to the public health emergency with respect to COVID 19 or its negative impacts. To have entertain motion to have the next two readings by title only. So moved. Second. Motion carries. We have resolution 03042024. It's a resolution updating the American Rescue Plan at the funds. Do you have any questions for anybody? I entertain motion to approve resolution 03042024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three.
guess a chance for further minutes. Mm -hmm. We have minutes from Monday, December 4th, 2023. Eric, any motion to approve those minutes? To the best of my recollection, I'll make that motion. Second it. All there. Motion carries 3-0. February 15th, 24. Correction, correct me. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Carries 3 0. We have a minute from uh, February 19th, 2024. No correction, but entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. <coughs> Have a chance to look over the travel authorizations? Yes. Yep. Can I take a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. All favor? Motion carries three out. Okay, claims, uh, transfers, appropriations. You guys had a chance to recall that over? Yeah. Hearing no concerns. We yeah, have uh, concern. I, well, okay. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know why we're putting solid waste in as a claim. It should be a pass through. I didn't understand why why it's a claim, but solid waste per? No, solid waste payment for thirty three thousand um, every distribute month. Distribute the money to them. So it has to be a claim, it can't be a pass through. It should just be a pass through. You sign off on everything that we write checks for. It is still a claim. I think we could, once we receive it, according to I think something you sent out twenty one that we can pass that right through the day we receive it. Yeah, we can distribute it earlier, but you still sign off on yeah. that in fact. Yeah. So, so as soon as that check comes in from the landfill, we, we can, Chantel can turn around and cut a check right to solid waste for the 33000 She can. Okay, yeah, because that's been the trouble she's been having. It's hard if we got mixed up in it. But, so that, that'll, we can start that then? Okay. Right. But, but it is money going through, so we, we do need that. But it can't go right through as soon as it can. Okay. Well, I, I thought it could. I mean, I don't know. Okay. <coughs> Any, anything else on we can go? No. Okay. All right. We have payroll for 223 $268,747.45 with a payroll deduction of $118,292.88. We have insurance claim docket uh, for disbursements for 215 dollars to 221.24 for $12,411.48. We have a claims number 1,000 claims for March 4th of $248,622.07. We have real tax. Claim of fifty thousand three hundred and seventy six dollars and fifty nine cents. We have the lit distribution of seven hundred and forty three thousand five hundred and eighty five dollars and eight cents. We have utilities twenty five thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars and thirty nine cents. <coughs> We have 
transfer request um, from the commissioners uh, to state, from state institution to continue the education uh, for $323. County Election Board for clerical system of 5,000 to Election Day clerk, 5,000. We have uh, Convention Tourism, no publications to advertising, Appropriation requests, uh, communications, $5,000 in equipment. Shortfall <coughs> 24 should have paid 23 to fix the right here. We have uh, drug free Fulton County. Prevention and education for eight thousand six hundred forty dollars. Intervention and treatment eight thousand four hundred or six hundred forty dollars. Criminal justice services eight thousand six hundred forty dollars. Administrative eight thousand six hundred forty dollars. It's request for the above amounts to be distributed to each account for drug free Fulton County to assist Fulton County community members in ways to decrease the drug and alcohol related issues within Fulton County. Run through the jail, right, Travis? Mm -hmm. No, drug free is independent of the jail. It's user user fees from probation is where it, where it comes from. But uh, the distribution and everything is all based off of IC codes. So okay. it, it all has to be evenly distributed between those four accounts. So that's okay. thirty-four thousand five hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, this is this money's coming. You will talk to the council right there. Right. We yeah. got a budget that we were okay. And that's it. That you still want you want to get the council to sign it also. I think that was the agreement. I mean it, it's, it's up to you guys. You guys are council. It, it's in our budget. Yeah, so it'll be it be your guys' signatures, correct, Bill? Sure. You do all the we gotta do the writing right. agreement. You have to do the punch. Right. Okay. I don't know that we have to sign it, but Okay, but it's in your budget. Correct. Okay. All right. So we have the uh, <coughs> funding agreement for the American Legion Post for twenty-five hundred dollars for twenty twenty-four for uh, the flags and gear markers for veterans' groups. So we have a motion to approve that funding agreement. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three zero.